and I'm here with Patrick Moker, the president of Microdose. Patrick, welcome to the Optimal Performance Podcast. Thanks for having me on, Sean. Great to be here. Uh, we were just, uh, I was getting up to date on your your world travels of late and, and, and uh, sort of pining for that digital nomad lifestyle that you have. I think the last time we spoke, you were in... Eastern Europe and 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 now you're in this in in Medellin, Colombia, mm-hmm. um, uh, fascinating fascinating life and lifestyle and, and the work that you, that you do at Microdose. For those uninitiated who have never heard of the company, what what is what does Microdose do? Yeah, so Microdose we're basically you know building towards being the central platform of the psychedelic industry. Um, you know, kind of merging content community commerce uh and we specialize in events so we've got uh got two in-person event series right now and cooking up a couple more uh one of them being wonderland miami which is coming up in uh, just over a month um doesn't feel like it and uh, another one being the uh, plant medicine week in malta that we're doing and we'll, we'll do that again probably in uh early march 2023 just pending uh dates beyond that we have Uh, a magazine called psychedelia we have an online training course called the science of psychedelics and you know we do blog content pr ir um really just you know trying to generate a a, a tuned in and you know highly qualified audience for uh facilitating you know the industry moving forward in a sustainable responsible manner is there another company similar to what you guys do is there is there another industry or another company that that people could like make a connection with oftentimes try and draw a parallel to tech crunch um you know take a look what they do and multiply that for psychedelics versus technology but you know there's also the intersection of psychedelics and tech so yeah just kind of like a platform play like that really industry specific yeah yeah the 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 website itself is like this massive treasure trove of so many different things. I don't know how many people you have working on the back end to to manage the site, but it is massive and robust. Like uh just for for folks that immediately want to pull up uh the website and just go dig into it a little bit and just sort of blow their mind with with uh, with psychedelic capital uh what what are, what are some places people can go on the website to to learn to 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 really dive deep into what it does yeah i mean it kind of depends on what you're looking for we've got a pretty um you know kudos to to connor our, our master uh, website and digital architect um so so there's you know the shop section if you feel like picking up some merch or you can go to the science of psychedelics or um, even just meander and explore through the blog. We've got a full-time uh, editor and, and senior writer, Jason uh, Najum, who keeps, keeps that thing really populated. A couple blog posts a day, um, industry narratives, breaking news. Um, you know, we've got some video content up as well. If you go to the event section and you want to sort of dive through the, the archives of what has come before this, um, it's probably a pretty pretty good synopsis, but like you said, it's a bit of a choose your own adventure and just dig in and and uh, meander as we. Ne- yeah, uh, you know, I see this. I see this really obvious connection between biohacking, uh, optimal performance, and psychedelics. And um, this this topic keeps coming up. This uh, you know, I think when most people think about the the use of psychedelics for medicines, for treatments, for uh, you know, uh, additions to sort of therapeutic modalities. What what I don't see represented very much, uh, and maybe you can illuminate this for me a little bit, is uh, psychedelic companies that are focused on performance optimization. You know, anxiety and depression, sleep, PTSD. We know that stuff for those who are just you know just diving in. They 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 understand that. Um, what can you tell me about? Uh, you know, psychedelic capital in the psychedelic industry when it comes to like perfor- cognitive performance or, um, you know, performance optimization, like what, what, what exists currently? Uh, good question. So there's, there's a couple different streams that you could um, think about in that context. There's, you know, uh, VR that can help augment or uh, in a sense, mimic psychedelic experiences. So 
Uh, you've got Trip VR that's got you know a robust catalog of of customers using you know their 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 VR worlds, if you will. Um, look at a, a company like Entheo Digital. They've got uh, basically a technology setup that helps mimic the uh, the same you know brain state or mind state. You know, del- I think it's delta or theta waves in the brain. Um, j- just using technology to make you feel like you're on psychedelics. Uh, that's an interesting one. There's, um, you know, companies and, and you'll notice that I'm kind of meandering around the actual use of the psychedelic, because obviously, as they're being, uh, you know, explored for medical purposes right now, that's a heavy part of the R&D out there. Um, but look at a company like like Wella, where you've got, um, you know, sort of a, a mimicked microdose that isn't actually psychedelic, you know, a combination of different um, different, you know, plant materials or caffeine or, you know, what, whatever it happens to be to really kind of mimic that, that psychedelic flow state, you know, enhance creativity, enhance focus. Um, I would say those, you know, are, are interesting. And then uh, Sybin with the kernel, uh, you know, actually like scanning the brain and seeing what impact, you know, these, these altered states have on the brain. But I think it's, it's really quite early right now um just based on getting you know a fundamental grasp and understanding of like you know and 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 with the focus of funding and biotechs and all that being on how can we create you know a drug that has a defensible property and actually proves you know a mechanism of 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 healing for for people i think that's that's actually what i'm really interested in about is the the betterment of the well and where, where is this going to go? I think we're going to see that play out for, for years to come as, you know, the, the, the current scientific environment unfolds and novel compounds are, are emerging and, and, and that kind of thing. So still early innings for uh, a question like that, but I really enjoy, you know, that, that thought process of where is this going? Yeah. Well, uh, I checked all the boxes. Uh, I've interviewed Lyle Maxson. I've interviewed Peter Raitano. I've interviewed Brett, Jesse Green. So when it comes to, you know, Guella, uh, Sybin and uh, Entheo Digital, uh, it's a little podcaster pat on the back for being being on top of uh, that, because that's what I'm interested in, right? Like, uh, um, you know, uh, a, a small dose of mushrooms and some snowboarding, you know, some uh, a small dose of of LSD and a, and a hike, you know, the, these sorts of things that that enrich, you know, these activities that get you into flow state. You know, uh, I'm fascinated by that area, and I'm optimistic that more companies, more products, more offerings will come out when it comes to. Uh, I think you said. Uh, bettering the well or something like that it's like i'm i'm good like uh, i've dealt dealt with my dealt with my trauma you know i'm not i'm i want to get better at what i'm doing now i want to enhance my 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 life and my performance and so um i'm excited about where that's going to go um yeah i mean it all comes down to state of mind right you know at the end of the day if you're healing from traumas or, or working through you know some things in your past or trying to look forward to the future and, and make your life a little better. Ultimately it's about mindset, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, you know, people understand that, you know, chemical, uh, chemical interventions for wellness, for performance, they're, they're, everybody knows that that's just not sustainable anymore. We want to gravitate away from these, you know, these chemical compounds, um, you know, pharmaceuticals uh, to enhance performance and, uh, and, and tap into more natural, uh, more holistic, you know, vibratory experiential treatments, processes, and products that will enrich, enrich lives. So. Yeah. I think, you know, like, I'm a little split on that one because, you know, when you, when you focus on, you know, the, the, the plant medicine and the natural and all that, it's, um, it makes sense. Uh, there is, you know, there's always going to be multiple segments of each market, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's kind of like creating as many options as possible so that, you know, everyone can do their own individual body and brain chemistry, uh, regardless of what the source material or matter is, you know, there's like mushrooms aren't plant medicine because they're not plants. MDMA isn't, LSD isn't, ketamine isn't, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of non-plants in there that still have a lot of 
medical benefit, obviously, you know, like uh, things like heavy doses of SSRIs and very dependent chemicals, probably not so ideal, you know, looking in the rear view mirror, but they, they served a, you know, a purpose and a time and a place. Um, I think it's really just about like expanding the catalog of what's on offer for people to really explore, you know, how their, how their brain works and what they're, cause it's like, everything is a chemical. I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> that's a, it's got a little sugar in it. That's a drug. You know, I had a beer a couple of days ago. There's another chemical still like them, still enjoy them. You know, maybe they don't, contribute to this perfection state but that's non-existent anyways um i'm trying to make uh eventually uh planet medicine catch on you know it's not from a plant but it's definitely going to help you out in this this uh universe if you will i uh, like that yeah and i mean the, the, my favorite example to like kind of like draw towards that what is natural what is chemical synthetic like your body is a chemistry lab too when you eat mushrooms you're eating psilocybin your body actually attacks it as a poison converts it into psilocin and that's what you know gets you high mm -hmm. so, you know and, and it's I, i'm no expert but my whole thing is like what's the difference between your body doing that chemistry and a trained scientist for you know 25 30 years doing that chemistry and you getting the same effect i don't know yeah yeah sure, that's sure, a good but it's, it's always the most fascinating panels uh on our platform the uh, online events or in-person events is this you know synthetic versus natural what is the then you know i think it's pretty pretty undefined at this point but but uh definitely a, an in interesting sort of uh, thought process to, to watch unfold and explore and uh you know opposing mindsets yeah yeah what does dennis mckenna dennis mckenna say we are drugs right like we <laughs> we are we are a soup we are hollow biots of all sorts of different things all just mixing together responding to inputs and uh providing us with this human experience and yeah i think it's important to to know that uh to think that there are that there are natural there are quote natural you know uh, things that you can take there are and there are synthetic things that you can take and and both have their place mm -hmm. uh so you mentioned you mentioned wonderland and so i want to i want to talk a little bit about that right now because um i think people are yearning for community and they're yearning for in person experiences and and for people who are who are listening now who may be interested or involved in um, in the medical industry or in the biohacking industry and are interested in learning more about um, you know psychedelic commerce, um, going and seeing people in person, shaking hands, dancing, you know, learning. That's that's such a key thing for for people. So give us a, give us an idea of of what people can expect. Uh, if if they were interested in Henda Miami like myself to go attend Wonderland, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is our our second year um, running Wonderland. We had our our first iteration last year, obviously with you know the world really just coming out of COVID. There were a couple of restrictions. Uh, or I think the the crowd favorite was no water in the venue. Uh, <laughs> so we've got we've got a different venue this year, uh, much sort of uh, more more open access. We're gonna have. Uh, three days of programming instead of two this year, two stages instead of one, 200 instead of 100 speakers. So we've really beefed up the curriculum. We've also uh, made sure to beef up kind of, you know, everyone's favorite part of an event is actually getting out there, being social, making connections, having fun. Sorry, a little mosquito patrol. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and so we've got a ton more cocktail hours. We've got, a, you know, refreshments in the venue, food stations, uh, and really leaning into the experiential vibe, obviously, community connection, all that is is one of the most important aspects to a conference like this. So we've got, you know, interactive opportunities like the the psychedelic cinema. We're actually going to be screening um, our documentary, The World on Drugs, there for the first time. Uh, mm. Two years ago, this thing is persistent. Um, <laughs> And we'll have a massage zone, an IV drip, uh, art gallery, VR area, uh, Entheo Digital will we'll be doing uh, demonstrations of their product. Um, lots of cocktail hours. We'll have an awards ceremony on Thursday night. We'll have a VIP welcome on Wednesday. We'll have after parties uh, every night. Uh, and then Saturday, we'll have the big sort of closing party, and that's going to be a, a fundraiser in support of MAPS. So I'm pretty excited mm. for that. Awesome. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah, it sounds like a blast. What, what, give, give me who are you looking forward to hearing speak? Um, I'm excited. We got a keynote from Paul Stamets this year, so he'll be joining us on stage. Uh, we have a keynote actually from the FDA, uh, which is pretty pretty big news. I think uh, you know not only the, like it kind of helps legitimate legitimify that's not a, <laughs> legitimize uh it helps legitimize you know the, the 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 conference the industry that kind of thing really seeing that you know the fda is like speaking and, and sort of helping lead lead the trail or train of thought in the industry um there's a couple that i can't speak of right now that i'm really excited about we haven't released them uh, we'll have a bunch of, you know, awesome keynotes. Our, our, our title sponsor, Algernon Pharmaceuticals, is going to have some very interesting um, things to talk about there. Um, Mind Biotherapeutics is going to be speaking about their phase one uh, trial, clinical trial results. So so we've got a lot of data drops coming that I'm, I'm pretty excited about, um, you know, some celebrity appearances and then obviously, you know, inter-industry celebrity appearances as well so um uh, also for future reference i'm terrible at picking favorites so you're always going to get a long drop <laughs> answer <laughs> pick one thing how, how about 17 <laughs> yeah, yeah. V- very diplomatic of you yeah you can't you can't play favorites <laughs> i still forgot about 50 so <laughs> <laughs> right well it begs a question you know i think uh, for, for those who are maybe a little less familiar with with psychedelic capital as a concept how many for-profit psychedelic companies exist right now, and and what do some of them do? Hundreds, for sure. Some of them do a lot. Some don't do anything. It's like any industry. You've got your winners and losers. Um, predominantly, I would say, like the 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 real, you know, like public facing, market focused uh, companies were uh, really really you know centered in on drug development, uh, drug discovery um you know not only like creating the existing molecules but really to get defensible ip you need to either have a proprietary process of using said entity or a new chemical entity an nce as they are called um so that really kind of like you know had a, had a major focus there was just news this morning from Cybin and mindset about a collaboration happening there and i think you're gonna you know see a lot more of that happening in the future um other you know trends maybe more on the the private side and and you know boutique and that kind of thing obviously retreats um clinics you had you know field trip come out hot and heavy early and you know capitalize on a, a lot of the mind share and market share for uh clinical applications and now you got a bunch of um uh of of other companies in that domain obviously that's you know an essential service is actually administrating the experiences uh, and then you've got, you know, the psychedelic assisted therapy alongside that, you know, VR, as we chatted about earlier, um, there, there's all sorts of like, where I look at the industry is like, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the, uh, picks and shovels, um, you know, think about, uh, data on the iPhone. There's, there's a bunch of, you know, tracking apps for how is this working? What am I reporting? How am I feeling? And like really building out a long-term analysis of that, um, but yeah, big, a big, big predominant focus on what are these things? How can we make new ones and, and which ones are the best? And, hmm. you know, lower side effects, higher efficacy, that kind of thing. It's, it's an exciting pursuit, I think. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you've oh, given AI. You can't forget about AI because everyone's talking about that nowadays. Yeah. Uh, t- tell me more about, tell me more about how a- AI plays into it. Um, well, I mean, very barbaric understanding of that, but I mean, you know, basically getting the robots to do your work, which I love, uh, you know, in, in certain applications. So, um, you know, there are companies like obviously Mindset and uh, Magic Med that'll, you know, take one molecule, use AI to generate, okay, here's what a thousand different variations would look like, which ones, you know, have the best safety profile and, and you know, unique traits amongst them and then actually you know get into the more um manual labor if you will i don't know if that's the right terminology to use here but again I'm not a scientist <laughs> you get, you get a pretty uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 speeding up the process of, of of what we're doing in the first place essentially yeah you know taking like the brain scan of like okay here's this person's brain here's 
10 million potential, you know, interactions or, or implications on the serotonin, dopamine, you know, 5-HT2A, GABA receptors, all that. And then, you know, like that's, that's where I think we're getting really close to the future science is like, okay, let's do this a lot faster and find custom solutions for, for, you know, cause everyone's brain is like a fingerprint. It's not, uh, here's your Prozac. You're all fixed. <laughs> mm-hmm. A lot more going on under the, under the hood, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I love, I love that you mentioned that because that at the heart of what, what, what performance optimization and biohacking is, is that it's individualized, right? I'm, I'm different today than I was yesterday. I have more inflammation because I didn't sleep very well last night. You know, I have, you know, perhaps more cortisol because I've got a busy day today. And I believe that, that the future of not only medicine, but the future of health optimization requires just this intricate customization for every single person. And in order to do that, we do have to rely on, on machines and algorithms to, to help us understand what is going to be the best thing for me right now to get X result, you know, to, to I- improve my, uh, my cognitive speed or to, you know, recover inflammation faster. And, um, and, and that's exciting to me because I think my children are are going to have a much different view of what health is and what health care and medicine is than than we do you know oh. there, ev- everything is going to be able to be customized everything is going to be able to be specific to where they are and what they want to get from x treatment or x experience or x compound and um th- that's really at the heart of um of biohacking too is like the way that I think about it is biohacking is what goes in you on you and around you to give you your desired outcome. You know, what, what, what have you put in your body? What is, what is actually touching your body and what are you surrounded by experientially to what end and where does that go? And, and of course I believe that, that psychedelics are, are so uh, useful in that exploration of what do I need right now? Where do I want to go? What do I want to get? I don't know if you have, you have thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's quite interesting because like they really help you do that inner work. You know, it's not about the exterior, you know, how, how you it's, it's, it's about kind of like getting past that, ego block of like this is what is and these are my ingrained thought processes and really helps you do like a deeper level of work in terms of you know like for me a a very transformative psychedelic experience was when you know I quit my job and I wanted to become an entrepreneur and I ate a bunch of mushrooms and went into the forest and thought about okay who am I what am I good at what do I value you know what is my purpose in life where do I want to go and you know help me kind of build that bridge for my passion profit and purpose intersection where you're in Akagi. Um, so I think it helps people really like, and and the other thing is it's not a panacea, right? Like a lot of people are kind of selling or not selling, but, you know, referring to these things as the be all end all solution. They're, they're not, they just help you do the work and they help you see things differently and, you know, change your mind literally. Um, yeah, I think I think that's that's an interesting train of thought. And then I also think that, like the longevity. Um that's that's what I'm starting to see more so in the last like six months or so intersect is the 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 crypto web three psychedelics and, and longevity intersection. You'll find a lot of the same people running in those circles or 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 same mindsets, if you will. Um they're not so focused on uh you know fixing what's broken it's more about fixing the, the the process and and uh you know actually like addressing healthcare from a very fundamental thought process of what do i put in my body what are the thoughts that i put in my brain what do i consume you know what do i uh send out as as a finished product you know it's it's uh it's interesting to see these worlds collide and there's another uh, presentation or, or a panel that'll include uh, Gary Zamudi from the Longevity Science Foundation at Wonderland that I'm particularly interested in. Another mm-hmm. little intent on the uh, announcements to come. 
Nice. Maybe go a little further, if you will, and and give give people an idea of what role psychedelics may play in longevity. Um, I mean, behavioral changes are everything to do with longevity, right? Um, what do I eat on a daily basis? Do I exercise? How do I feel? How are my relationships? Where am I in community? Community, 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 community. <laughs> Something that's really been missing in the last couple decades. And, you know, very curious that we have a mental health epidemic spurring where, you know, in other uh, countries around the world that are, you know, quite frankly, um, poor from a GDP perspective, uh, better happiness scores, you know, more, more longevity with less access to modern medicine. There's an equation there that, you know, doesn't quite uh, stack up if you're thinking about it from a very ROI analytical, you know, capital focus perspective. So I think um, getting out of that, you know, thought process and, 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 really doing that like deeper level of thinking about you know your your it's all compound interest one way or another if you're eating healthy working out meditating you know being close to friends and family versus eating junk isolating you know like wor working yourself into quite a chaotic state of mind that's not going to benefit your longevity purposes overall i don't think Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What you're touching in is, is lifestyle design, right? At what, what, how do you, how do you live your life? What does your day-to-day -day look like? And, and is it, is it going to keep you alive longer? Uh, is it, is it going to increase your health span? Uh, or is it, or is it prematurely aging you? And uh, I, I, yeah, I think that's, I think that's really interesting. And obviously, you know, the, even though psychedelics and, and these various compounds are individual, you know, my, my trip is not the same as yours. We have very different experiences. They do bring people together. You know, um, I think, you know, a, a lot of people probably had their first psychedelic experience with others who were of the same, you know, of the same mindset, you know, um, you know, think how many people had their first psychedelic experience, like first or second year in college, you know, eating some psilocybin mushrooms and, and, and walking around campus or going out in the woods. I mean, that's, you know, that's part of my origin stories and, and, and that, that does bring community. And like you, like we know from the blue zone sort of research is like, that's what keeps people alive. If you have, if you have warm friends, if you see them, you know, the, the fact that, that, drinking wine is maybe not about the wine it's about the people that you're drinking the wine with and that's what helps you live longer it's not the resveratrol it's actually the fact that you're just like slowing down and sipping yeah. wine right What's going on with these italians living forever eating all those carbs and drinking like professionals every night oh it's because mm. they're doing it with their family and friends i got it because they're la <laughs> they're laughing they're you know they're hugging they're getting into arguments and resolving them and and i, I think that you know, the, the psychedelic, I mean, Burning Man is a really great example of that, right? Like, is, is just this, this sense of, the sense of community where that of like-minded people that, that are looking for a common good and creating a new world, right? Like that's, that's fundamental for, for society and for humanity. You know, I did, uh, I did an episode with, uh, with Paul Austin, uh, and, um, uh, I asked him this question, like, how do you, how do you see the future? What does it look like for you? And he's like, and he just went off. Like he just went off on this tangent about, you know, um, decentralized communities, trade and barter systems, um, you know, sustainable energy, you know, interconnectedness digitally and interconnectedness in person in communities that are, you know, self-sustaining. And uh, I don't think he's wrong. I think that, uh, I, I think that there's always going to be major metropolis. There's going to be giant cities and stuff like that, but, but there's also, there's always also going to be, you know, people like the happiest country in the world, which is Costa Rica, where people kind of live in little villages and they love their life and they eat the same food every night. They eat the beans and the rice and a little, maybe a little piece of meat or fish and they're stoked. They're, they're really happy with themselves. I, so I'm going to ask the same question to you. Um, what, what's your What's your view of the future? Um, I don't generally do crystal ball very well, just like favorites, but you know, I've got 
it's 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 a lot of information to synthesize and export you know like you look you look at the way that the world is working currently and if you watch the news you probably have a much more negative outlook on exactly what's happening there i was actually just in costa rica a couple of weeks ago and what you just described was a you know a project i was kind of checking out is you know a completely off-grid uh, sustainable regenerative economy with autonomous communication systems and that kind of thing i think i think that is definitely an appealing proposition and path forward um but you know something that is also accessible to a select few in life um there there's probably a difference in the way i see the world moving forward pragmatically versus the way i would like it to see move forward um you know that the pragmatic like where are we actually going uh there's a big division of you know wealth inequality right now that is generally i think uh you know to the saying of gonna get worse before it gets better um there, you know, the mental health epidemic is obviously expanding in, in a rapid se sequence. I think it's like, you know, over COVID, it was 20 or 30% annual increase year over year of a bunch of the leading mental health, uh, you know, ep ep epidemics happening right now. But I think um, something like this, almost a similar um, thought process is how I looked at the, you know, the Trump presidency is is it's kind of like things like this have to happen in order for people to really look deep and be like okay mirror is this what i want to see happening or am i going to change because really you don't change people you don't change their minds you don't change their behaviors they change themselves i think that's been you know repeatedly proven time over time throughout humanity and look at the roman empire how many thousands of years ago versus the American empire right now, how many similarities and how many differences. Um, so, you know, while, while I would love to be utopian in thought, I just, I think it really ultimately depends on where the people in positions of power want to see this go. Um, you know, as much as I, 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 I don't want to admit that just from a, you know, intellectual standpoint, that's what I have to kind of imagine is going to be the way things lay out now the um you know the other side or train of thought of that is obviously you know you got conferences like davos and the, the milken institute and concordia which we recently brought the conversation around psychedelics into um you know for the first time it's encouraging for me to see that these are being taken seriously on the world stage now um you know, alongside uh, in, environmental uh, change, you know, going carbon free, carbon neutral, really undoing a lot of the work of the last 40 years of um, extractionism economics. Um, so I see progress, I see a generational shift happening right now where people actually give a shit about the environment, about their own personal environment, about how they live their lives and, you know, where they want to go. I just think it's going to be, quite frankly, a tug of war over the next, you know, 20, 30 years as generational wealth shifts into new hands with, you know, the adoption of cryptocurrency, look at, you know, how that changed people's lives from a decade ago, but it's still only 1%, I think, of the annual, uh, you know, or the global uh, money supply. Um, so really, like, I, I don't pretend to have any answers or any, you know, ultimate outcomes, but I think it, it, it kind of comes down to where the balance of you know wealth and influence goes and how that transition is monitored by you know people that really want to see change for for those folks who have who have been involved in or have been experimenting with psychedelics for a long time i think that there's this fear that big pharma is going to get involved and muddy the waters and it's going to turn into this this from this beautiful amazing thing that that helps humanity to this heavy-handed overly controlled and, and manipulative sort of way to manage psychedelics and psychedelic type of companies well, re realistically how how involved is big pharma whatever that means now and and where do you see it going i mean big pharma has already entered the chat um 
ketamine is legal now as a psychedelic therapy because of the work that Johnson and Johnson did on uh, S ketamines, bravado being their sort of unique formulation. Um, I mean, generally, I think the reception and impact of ketamine being a you know legal rescheduled you know medically available drug has been very good. Um, maybe not in the sense of the commercial impact of the rollout as much as you know bullish projections had thought but you know ultimately you've got otsuka working with mindset pharma you've got sanofi working with Turan biosciences um what were the other ones there's a couple other you know uh biotech names big biotech that have you know been actively involved or are doing research a lot of them are quietly you know, behind the scenes working on this, I, I think it's a bit of an inevitability when you, you know, it's the same thing that happened in cannabis, you know, the, the sort of the, the suits and the roots factions. And when a underground, you know, what's been considered a legal industry um, for 50 plus years since the just say no era and campaign started, when it becomes legal, you know, it's going to enter the mainstream fray of you know medical adoption and gonna have to align with that sim system ultimately right that that's not saying that big pharma is gonna own everything and be the be all and end all i mean you're not gonna see retreats disappear you're not gonna see you know friends hanging out and enjoying some mushrooms together disappear um in decriminalized areas like oakland i think you're going to see a massive consumer market uh bur burgeoning and that's that's going to be you know largely not dictated but dominated by more boutique players um i i think the best approach to take with that is in integrating the two worlds you know like there there's you know, I've, uh in previous years not been you know a huge fan of big pharma and their tactics and there's certainly some you know dirty manipulation of markets and and of the medical system and of insurance systems and that kind of thing but ultimately you know the purpose of these medicines is to change minds change behaviors and change outcomes so i think you know having having the conversation early on you know integrating a lot of parties at the table like you know the, the money isn't evil it's energy it's who uses it what they use it for mm -hmm. same thing could be said for you know psychedelics and relationships and and just about everything there's a really good shakespeare quote that i like it's the only shakespeare quote i know but, uh tis tis neither good nor bad but thinking makes it so you know mm -hmm. words, words are just words emotions carry the energy you know how how they're um given and received that that has the real impact and it's the same thing with this i think it's it's you know who integrates the factions how does the conversation happen you know can we make sure that there's equal access for for you know people that are uh, less privileged to be able to afford really expensive psychedelic you know therapy and and, and medical treatments is there um you know integration into the insurance system overall like that's that's going to have a huge impact on people that actually really need these therapies being exposed to them you look at um you know first responders or, or veterans with ptsd maps is working right now and has been working with the fda for 37 years to get you know mdma as a medicine legalized and and usable in a clinical setting and i think that's an admirable pursuit i think that without that work and without because because there is also like a very large faction of people that only want to access medic medicine in that medical setting and within you know, mm. trained professional psychotherapist or a, you know a, a psychedelic assisted therapy session something like that and, and then there's you know there's also the faction that just wants to go out and do them out on their own mm. um i think it's wrong to say that one path over the other is necessarily right or wrong you know my way or the highway absolute absolutism is definitely taking the world by storm and there's there's a lot of paths to consider and a lot of you know um it's it's personal medicine work so the, the more modalities and the more um routes of administration that you can open up that are you know 
responsibly managed, I think that's a good thing. Hmm. What an excellent answer. Holy cow. I mean, that, that was even handed diplomatic insightful. That was that, that, that that put me at ease uh you know i i, I tend to <laughs> i that's, tend that's to... the benefit of, of doing these things all the time and like hearing the pros you know i'm like okay that except for you that from you that from you that from you here's my answer <laughs> it's great yeah. I'm not I the mean, guy in the room that's for sure but well, well you you synthesized all all that that that's a that's a that's a hard question to to to, to answer and and you've made a lot of great points. I think I'm probably going to go back and listen to that a couple of times because the sort of necessary role that they play, you know, the fact that people do need access uh, and they will only pursue the, the access if it's done in a regular, highly regulated way or created, right? The, you know, the other way to look at it is, you know, there's like the, the big vaccine controversy happening. Aren't you glad you don't have polio, smallpox, yada, yada. Like, I'm sure glad I have a, EpiPen for when I almost fucking die in the forest from getting bit by a mosquito, you know, that, that was all created and made possible by big pharma, hmm. no perfect player in the room, but you know, medical advances are part of the capitalistic society. And until we switch out from being a capitalistic society, which I don't necessarily think is going to happen. And, you know, the non utopian uh, logical way of thinking as much as I would love that to happen. It's just, maybe not gonna you know like this overnight so you know you, it's like don't hate the player hate the game mm -hmm. but if you want to win the game you have to be a player yeah. and, and it's on each of us to do our research right it's on each of us to understand what you know free will still governs the cosmos alongside love and if we are are cognizant and studied and paying attention then we can make the decisions that's right that's right for each of us you know we we, we know we know the risks of uh, antibiotics right and they're pretty important if you have ringworm right if you you know like so so there are ways to approach some of these things that are that are sort of brought to you by big pharma but but managing them understanding the pros and cons and making a decision with informed consent, which is for me, the, the biggest sticking point is, is can you make the right decision for yourself with informed consent? And if you can do that, then cool. Uh, another, another, another question. This is because I'm, this is what we're doing here. Um, I'm, I'm sort of, <laughs> I, I ask the questions, you answer them. Uh I have a. I'm. I'm curious about the sustainability of some of the uh, psychedelic companies. You know, with with treatments. Um. You know, uh, and I'm. I'm assuming a fair bit here, but when, when, for a lot of these experiences, where the end outcome is to get you to a place of homeostasis, right? Is is to like we're gonna treat you, we're gonna help you, and then you're gonna go off and do good in the world that I'm curious that how can, how can the companies continue to make money and be sustainable if there isn't a need for like repeat dosing or multi-year or multi-decade treatments and, 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 and ingestion or whatever, like how, how does that work? If, if, if someone's getting, if the goal is to get to homeostasis and uh, and not be on a thing for the rest of their life, then how can some of these psychedelic companies continue to be sustainable? It's a great question. I like it. Um, I mean, look at, uh, look at, let's take an example of like breakthrough therapy trainings. You go see Grant Cardone or, you know, whoever those guys are and you have this epiphany and you're like, Oh fuck, I'm an entrepreneur now. Or, Oh, I want to do this. And, you know, you, you bet they have some follow-up courses for you to take to, oh, yeah, you got this knowledge now. You got the insights. Let's act on that. How are you, how are you going to make that real? Um, I, I would view it in a similar context, you know, like, like you, because that's, that's often, a, you know, a criticism and rather probably an unexplained criticism um, or, or even just thought process of psychedelic medicine. Okay, so I take this $20 mushroom journey and i'm set i'm fixed right what okay cool 20 bucks times how many you know what's your what's your tam um 
maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. Take a look at the, uh, you know, luxury wellness uh, tourism market, almost a trillion dollars annually. That's a lot of money. Um, take a look at the, you know, supplement markets. That's a lot of money. Functional mushrooms. That's a lot of money. Um, coaching, therapy, betterment of the well, hint, hint. That's a lot of money. So, you know, you're, you're, you're building when you're a company like this, that's really, you know, designed to help people change their lives and change the way they think and have that breakthrough aha experience. You're going to want to give them something further, you know, to work with, hmm. um, you know, companies like a uh, good example is, is, is new life. You know, when they do the, the, you know, take home ketamine treatment, you get the lozenge, you, you do that. They're not, you know, predicating all of their revenue on selling you ketamine, they have coaching, they have dietitians, they have, you know, the, the, the online app where maybe you, you can get the online app sponsored. At, at the end of the day, it's a eyeballs, you know, attention and eyeballs and what is the best source of making revenue in just about any company ever? It's word of mouth. Hmm. Um, so I look at it as a long-term play and how can you kind of like build consumer loyalty over time for regenerative health products? Hmm. That might, that might be, you know, and that's not a concrete answer or blueprint or anything like that, but you have, you know, if I'm ketamine company XYZ and, and I just did the, you know, the ketamine treatments range from $600 a session to $50,000. I heard one time for six sessions, pretty insane yeah. in my mind, but it goes there. Right. So you know, what happens when I'm, I'm now sort of like feeling really good and, you know, I want something to like take it a step further. I'm probably going to use your app. I might look into their coaching. I might, you know, get a diet plan or continue working with the therapist that, you know, helped me get to that state to take it to the next level, or just, you know, there's, there's no such, uh, no, no harm in, in looking at it, you know, from a, a semi-regular context of like, okay, I've lost my teeth. Why don't I floss my brain? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that answer. And, and I, and I, I think it goes along with what I believe is that there's always more to learn. There's always more curriculum. There's always higher levels of performance. There's, there's even higher levels of wellness and peace and joy in your life. And if there are, you know, um, life happens, you know, change is inevitable. And if you are, if you have brand loyalty to X psychedelic company that does, you know, maybe six or seven different things really well, you may stay in that suite of offerings that they have uh, to get a tune up occasionally, you know, or to, or to reorient, you know, where you're headed or, or change your mind again, right. And change your mind again and change your mind again, loss of a loved one, do some, do some work, you know, and there's also like, you know, part of the equation that hasn't fully been explored, but I think that's going to be homework that's done by uh, insurance companies pretty aggressively is like, how much money does an underperforming, you know, dependent on the system human consume over the lifetime of, you know, being treated with top ups on their, you know, pain, anxiety, depression, medication that is, you know, always happening decreases in productivity in the workforce, um, an increased burden on the, the, you know, the medical system, the criminal justice system, when you're still criminalizing conscious changing substances, uh, the education system, you know, like what happens when you have a functionally healed or at least, you know, working a little better society, maybe you look at the long-term impact of these and say like, Hey, here's how much money you can save. Hello company. Would you like to you know, reduce your employee turnover, save on insurance for your company policy, you know, have a smarter, harder working workforce. Like here's how much money you can save over the next 20 decades by adopting this as a preventative medicine. Mm -hmm. It's the same equation that people are doing in, um, you know, the biohacking world, right? Yeah, right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Ooh, good correlation. I like that. What did we miss? What what uh, what question did I not ask that maybe you were hoping I would? Or is there something something that you're like, man, I'm really working on this, or I'm really fascinated by this? Just any anything else that we left a uh, stone unturned? Oh, it's such a hard question to answer because there's so many things going on at all times. Uh, 
Yeah, I think, yeah, we covered like Wonderland, I, you know, a lot of, lot of broad reaching conversation, which I generally really enjoy. Um, That's okay. If you feel yeah, no, I, satisfied. I, I, I'm, I'm sad. I'm always satisfied at the end of the interview. Cause like, really it's about that kind of like, you know, conversational dynamic. And I felt like we had a good sort of far, far reaching exploration, no concrete answers, but I'll, I'll, I'll point you towards the experts with the real concrete answers eventually. Um, maybe just like uh, letting people know that, you know, if you want to uh, learn more or see more from microdose uh, we're on, all social handles is microdose hq we just got our instagram back after two months in jail mm. uh, microdose.buzz is our website and that'll have more information about wonderland which is uh coming up november 3rd to 5th um we are gonna be having a couple more product launches coming out in the coming months so you know just best to stay tuned on social or email newsletter or you know feel free to reach out uh directly if you have any questions i'm always happy to chat with anyone yeah, what's the best place for people to connect with you directly? Let's say somebody wants to sponsor or attend or or just just you know connect with you directly. Yeah, I mean uh, info at microdose.buzz. We all sort of see everything that comes in and it goes to the right person. So any any inquiries about you know speaking, sponsoring, partnerships, that'll all get filtered to the right person. Uh, I'm a fan of Twitter personally. I like being out there uh, well well captured on Twitter. Um, and uh, uh, you could send a carrier pigeon, just fly it through <laughs> that, that window over there and I'll receive it. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll input some GPS coordinates in there. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, th the last question that I ask everybody is a fill in the blank question. And this can be based on, you know, anything that, you know, any wisdom that you feel uh, um, compelled to share and you can elaborate as much or as little as you like, but please fill in the blank. Everyone would benefit from knowing. Everyone would benefit from knowing. Oh boy. Another favorite. Um, it's an interesting one. I don't know. I think, um, you know, re reframing the way you think about mistakes is always pretty important and one one quote that really helped me on that one was wisdom comes from experience and experience comes from mistakes uh so just being able to frame you know like everyone social media and thought leadership is always like showing you the top 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 of people's lives and it's really easy to play that you know comparison game and be like oh, i'm not enough or, i'm not good enough or you know if only this that and the other but you know they got there from trial error and absolute failure at times um so i think any, everyone would benefit from knowing that like you know when you're when you're looking up to somebody they started exactly where you were at one point mm. generally mm -hmm. silver spooner but then you're probably not looking up to them <laughs> <laughs> nice that was great i appreciate it well, this has been such a such a great conversation, Patrick. You know, I think the work that you're doing is it's way ahead of its time. It's 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 incredibly important uh, for for progress in humanity, and uh, it's been a pleasure to have you today on the Optimal Performance Podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at Wonderland and and hearing more. Um, has anyone ever during an interview turned that question back on you? Uh, to ask you what you what uh, you know if if everyone could know this, let's see if we can do a little reversey. You know, I, I I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe maybe. Um, I uh... <laughs> I five to that person. Yeah. I, uh, I I think everyone would benefit from knowing that uh, we are infinite beings of love, light, and truth. There is always more. We are a continuation. We are we are an ever evolving um, uh, entity. We we there's always more. There's always change. There's no finish line. And when you understand that and really meditate on that and absorb that and think of think of yourself as a continuous and constant and never ending work in progress, hopefully it lets you relax a little bit and and uh, and slow down and um and make better choices that that for yourself and and for uh humanity at large love that love that nice one Thanks. yeah i was uh, i think there is like a pre-intake
question or is like what's your favorite quote or something like that i don't know if i got too many or the or the insight thing but that that reminded me of a, a good one that i like uh, he who rejects change is the architect of decay mm. uh, which is a nice one. i forget who said all these but the, it's whoever said that smart guy <laughs> yeah i like that i agree completely well see you uh see you in miami in about a month patrick Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All the best. And to everyone that listened, thank you for doing so. Thanks.